special edition. Good evening, everyone. I'm Christy Casciano. I'm Jeff Kulikowski. Still three hours before the polls close, more Central New Yorkers have voted in this election than ever before. Incredible. We've got team coverage for you tonight in the 24th Congressional District race. News Channel 9's Josh Martin is following John Katko's campaign. Our Adrian Smith is following Dana Balter's campaign. But first, let's get started with News Channel 9's Andrew Donovan, already in place at the Onondaga County Board of Elections. You're going to be there all night for us, Andrew, and it's such a different election year. How is the night going to unfold there? Well, Christy, that's why we're here, so we can see it firsthand. Because of all of the options people had to vote this year, the results will come in different waves. First, around 9 o'clock, the Board of Elections across New York State will have their first access to the results from early voting. So we'll see those results around 9.30. Then between 10 and hopefully by 11, all of the results from today's in-person voting. So by the end of the night, we will have in-person totals, but it might be a full two weeks or more before all of the absentee envelopes are opened. The Republican Elections Commissioner for Onondaga County takes me into a room most people don't see. This is our ballot room. This is our machine room. This is our warehouse. It's the everything room. Yes. This is where the more than 50,000 absentee ballots are sorted and safely stored. That is not the 125 that we thought we were going to get. So. Uh, I expect us to know about three quarters of the vote on election night. But the last 25% that will likely decide close races come from these absentees, which will stay sealed until the last few thousand to trickle in. By the end of the week, the state will void the absentee ballot of any voter who changed their mind and went in person instead, which is allowed by law. Then the envelopes get opened. Cayuga County will go first on Saturday. Onondaga on Monday, and over the course of the next week, the rest of the boards of elections will follow. 1A, 3A, 4A. Two years ago, we saw the process in Madison County. The envelopes are opened, the votes are read aloud as campaign volunteers take their own tallies, but the official count is when the board of elections scans each ballot. When we start opening those absentees, it's a lot of work to get done. We usually have 14 days, we're going to try to get it done in four. Both congressional races that we're covering in central New York, the 22nd and the 24th, in addition to any close race, might not have results tonight. There might not be known winners until all of those absentees are counted. If the number of votes between the candidates is smaller than the number of absentees, we'll have to wait for next weekend and beyond. Live in Syracuse, Andrew Donovan, News Channel 9. Andrew, thank you. As former Congressman Jim Walsh told me, Christy, the other day, you don't declare victory, you're declared the victor. Well, we, did, we may not know, including the race for president, lines of voters have been heading to polling sites in key battleground states all day. And those states will determine whether President Donald Trump or former Vice President Joe Biden will serve the next four years in the White House. Those battleground states include Pennsylvania, Florida, Iowa, Georgia, and Michigan. President Trump predicting that he'll do even better than he did in 2016. Biden also upbeat, praising the voter turnout. Nearly 102 million people voted early. And now to New York's 24th Congressional District, where it's been a back-and-forth slugfest between incumbent Republican Congressman John Katko, Democratic challenger Dana Balter. We have team coverage in this 2018 rematch with News Channel Line's Adrian Smith and Josh Martin. We begin with Josh, who's live at a polling site at St. Michael's Church in Camillus. Josh. The 24th congressional race is one of the tightest in the country. It's a rematch from 2018, Congressman John Katko versus Dana Balter. The congressman has been towing a fine line during this campaign, which he says he is proud of. He has been also distancing himself from President Trump. Katko said that he did endorse Trump, though he's said several times that he doesn't necessarily like Trump as a person, more based on his policies is for his endorsement. And as our viewers know, there have been plenty of attack ads in this race. There have been so many in the past few weeks, Balter and Katko not pulling any punches. Today, the congressman had a busy day, traveling to all four counties which he currently serves, Wayne, Cayuga, Onondaga, and Oswego. Katko is applying for the job for the 24th congressional seat for the fourth time. We spoke with him earlier today, asking him if he wished he did anything different along the campaign trail. Not at all. I mean, now listen, I, we've done everything we possibly can. I'm totally at peace with whatever happens because I've done everything I can, and I, I've got a lot of faith in the voters. I do. 
As we mentioned, this is a rematch from 2018. Democrat Dana Balter taking a second swing at John Katko for that seat. With the Balter campaign is News Channel 9's Adrian Smith. Adrian joins us now from Syracuse. Josh, similar to Congressman Katko, Dana Balter, his challenger, also had a busy election day, really just engaging, engaging in a lot of voter outreach, even with some undecided voters. Her first stop is an election day tradition, and she stopped at the mother's cupboard in Syracuse, and then she... As an election day tradition, she stopped there, and Balter voted last week on the first day of early voting, but she made her way to her own polling location, the Spiritual Renewal Center in Syracuse, and that was a way for her to stop and thank the pollers and say uh, thank you to the volunteers. Now, we had the chance to speak with her there and ask how the pandemic has impacted her campaign strategy and getting voters to the polls. I feel really good about this election. I am confident that we have made the case to voters about what is at stake in this race. I think that's one of the sort of bonuses that was unexpected in um, having to campaign virtually is that we were able to bring new people into the political process. And it's one of the reasons why even after life is back to quote unquote normal, I'm going to keep using these tactics. Now, instead of those large in-person gatherings that we're all used to on election night, Balter, like many other candidates, will be just with close family and friends and campaign staff as we all see those results trickle in. Live at Nottingham High School, Adrian Smith, News Channel 9.